Have you found yourself sleeping easier, but then slowly, little by little, the insomnia sort of creeps back in. You find yourself having more trouble sleeping, but you also see that this happened slowly. There was sort of a slow buildup to this. Well, if so, this video is perfect for you. We're gonna take a look at why this happens because I get this question quite a lot. And uh, you know, we're gonna talk about this insidious return of insomnia and how to see this not happen anymore. Of course, that's what we'd like to see. Now, before we jump into uh, today's uh, talk, quick announcement. Uh, I'm, I have, because of other engagements and commitments, uh, there'll be no live Q&A this, this Wednesday in two days and also no rundown. But uh, we are going to have um, our uh, Heard Online tomorrow. And I have a really nice uh, uh, success story to, to share for Thursday. All right. And then, of course, next Wednesday, we'll res our normal program will resume. But yes, today we're going to look at, uh, you know, three, three, I broke this down into like three parts. Why insomnia can creep back. And uh, two, we're going to look at the distraction paradox and then how peaceful sleep returns. So yeah, let's start with one, one here. Why can insomnia creep back? And I call it you know, creep back and sound a little bit like, you know, there's a little trigger, a little bit triggering wording there, but it's because that's, you know, how most people ask, Ask me this question, like, how can it creep back like this? And so to understand that, we, we need to see that insomnia happens, like, from the very get-go when we inadvertently develop a habit of trying to control sleep. And it is, of course, inadvertently. We None of us, you know, intentionally go like, oh, I'm going to create insomnia for myself. And, you know, I'm going to do that by trying to force myself to sleep by doing all these things. But... Um, Inadvertent doesn't mean that it's not, in retrospect, quite obvious. We can see that, oh, yeah, I had a health scare or I took some antibiotics or I became mom and that was a stressful time. And, and it's normal that I didn't sleep that time, but it was actually myself trying to control it that it ultimately led to me having insomnia. We can see that quite clearly uh, in retrospect. And then um, when we do see this clearly, we become aware and we leave all these sleep efforts. We don't try to control sleep anymore. We sleep well, but here comes the but, you know, especially if, if the struggle with uh, sleep was really intense and perhaps to some degree, if it happened over a period of time uh, as well, there can be this residual habits, you know, the brain can have been this kind of safety mode for such a long time that it can have, cr you know, created these kind of like subconscious habits of trying to control sleep and these can kick in without us taking note of them. So if you imagine that, you know, you know, someone has like left the intense struggle with, with insomnia and, you know, they're living their lives and then, uh, you know, they stop, uh, you know, we stop splashing our face with cold water in the evening. I remember this one because somebody told me about this specific one. They noticed that after brushing their teeth, they no longer splash their face with cold water in the evening just because, you know, it's cold and it's not nice to be cold. And so maybe we do that and maybe we like, we don't go out so much in the evening anymore because we realize, like, uh, I'm more of an introvert, actually. That's, uh, you know, I, that's how I prefer things. Uh, but I do have, I did, I did, you know, we do join a Tai Chi group because, you know, I've always been interested in that. You know, it can be a nice thing to do. And then sort of out of the blue, we realize, oh, my gosh, we have insomnia again. And it kind of happened gradually and slowly. Like, how does this happen? And and here, you know, you, you know, it's, it may be quite obvious to you what, what I'm trying to get at here, but it is that these efforts, these sleep efforts can, can slowly build up without us being fully conscious of it. When we are not splashing our face with cold water after, you know, brushing our teeth in the evening, it was actually because we were afraid that that was going to alert us and that we were not going to sleep. When we started like not going out in the evening to see friends it was similarly because we thought that was going to be too engaging and maybe we wouldn't sleep. And when we rejoined that Tai Chi group, uh, we were actually trying to make ourselves more calm so that we would sleep better. And it can be tricky because it can seem like, it can look like, oh, insomnia is a thing. It has like a life of its own and it can creep back upon us and we need to manage the insomnia. But then you see, we're trying to control things that we cannot control again, which is tricky. And it's not like this. In reality, um, it is our safety-minded brain that 
has a life of its own, which it's supposed to have. Like that's what it was designed for. But sometimes it plays this undercover agent thing. Like it, it goes into like undercover mode and does things without us being fully conscious. And it sort of tries to protect us against this imagined villain. And then uh, things become really tricky because this our efforts our efforts actually creep back. And then uh, and then we have more tr uh, trouble sleeping again. And the thing is that I, I love to point out is that insomnia actually requires effort. It is an absolute requirement that we do something to try to stop it versus sleep. Peaceful sleep requires nothing. So knowing this, we can see that insomnia actually can't really creep back unless our efforts creep back. You know, that's a requirement for it. And now um, the same the same client, actually, one of my clients who who was, you know, one of the persons who, who asked me about like some creeping back also pointed me out to this, this distraction paradox. She said that uh, she had noticed that after a time, a period of time where she was quite busy, she had actually seen some of these efforts sneak back, if you will. And the paradox here is that typically, uh, most commonly when we are busy, engaged, you know, we have obligations, things that take uh, our, our attention in a certain direction can actually be helpful. Because we see that when our attention is going in, you know, some some type of focused direction, we sleep easier automatically because attention is shifted away from sleep and we're not trying so much to sleep anymore. But this is what this client noticed. Being busy, perhaps particularly in a time period where like, you know, we're not struggling like with insomnia so much anymore. We've kind of left this struggle, but now we're busy. And now we're actually not paying attention to these little efforts creeping back in again, right? So being busy can actually lead to us not paying attention to these kind of undercover efforts adding up. And then we can find ourselves like being surprised, like, oh, I have some more struggle again. But, but uh, I hope it's clear why this happens. So now we can uh, uh, go to the, the final point here, which is like, how, how do we find peaceful sleep again? And, you know, the, the answer, of course, is the same as when we had insomnia the first time. It's, it's like seeing the efforts and, and leaving the efforts lead to peaceful sleep. But, uh, you know, to continue this kind of analogy of the undercover agent, uh, we, we, we can see that, you, can, you know, we, we know that from like movies and popular culture that when an undercover agent, when, when their cover is blown up, like, you know, when, when their identity is revealed, they can't work in the shadows anymore. They're kind of like, you know, they can't do anything. And I think it's the same thing kind of internally here that when we deploy awareness and honesty, that keeps us from quote unquote mindlessly adding effort and recreating insomnia. In other words, when we've you know seen things getting easier and we we know about you know what we just talked about this in the, in this particular video right here, then when we find ourselves kind of like not splashing our face with cold water in the evening again, we can be like, oh, wait a minute. Uh, maybe there's some, maybe there's a reason I'm not doing this anymore. And we deploy that awareness and all we're honest, kind of like, you know, we're, we're, you know, truly seeing what we're doing for what it is. And then automatically, you know, this automatically leads to less effort because, you know, when efforts are, are really tricky when they're, when they're secret, that's when they can kind of pile up, add up. But when when we are aware of them, that automatically teaches us, you know, that that automatically leads to the brain kind of abandoning them because the brain sees what's going on and it of course doesn't want us to struggle. So, and then with that effort, of course, peaceful sleep happens by itself. Um, so yeah, I hope um, this was value valuable to you and brought something new uh, to you. And um, as always, let me know in the comment section what you thought. And also, if you are finding yourself on the path where you want to be to peaceful sleep, where you feel like yourself again, you live the life you want to live, that is wonderful, please let us know. But if things are tricky, if it's hard to, you know, piece together the puzzle and find yourself on that path to peaceful sleep, then please head over to our website and check out our coaching options. And if you decide to join, then uh, we can't wait to see you on the inside. With that said, we have a beautiful rest of your day and look forward to having you back soon. Bye for now.